The following is a Thorf TV production, brought to you in cooperation with Jack Thorfinson. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Evening Gun Chat, that relaxing time way up north near the Canadian border where Mr. Holster reflects on his weekend and talks about guns. With no more further ado, let's have a big round of applause for that relaxed YouTube personality, Mr. Holster. <laughs> Why, aren't you ever going to change that, Jack? Relax? That guy's like comatose. Honestly, and, and actually, it's better when he is comatose, because when he's awake and he talks, God, talk about, bo oh, Mr. Holster, hey. <laughs> Howdy, parts. Yeah, Jack. Jack, I... Yeah, you know, buddy, I know it's a new set and everything, but I don't think this is going to work. I don't, I don't think you could sit there, not on, not on the workbench. What? Yeah, well, yeah, we'll get you a director's chair. Good idea. But right now, well, producer's chair, actually, technically you're not the director, Jack, you're the producer. Well, we'll see what we can do, but right now we got a show to do, Jack, so... You, you're just going to have to, you're going to have to go sit in the desk chair. Holly Pards, it's me, yeah. Welcome to Sunday Evening Gun Chat. Tonight we're going to talk about what to look for when you buy yourself a Ruger. Yeah, a Ruger revolver. Let's, let's make sure, let's be clear on that from the get-go. We're going to talk about revolvers tonight. Before we get started and, and dive right into it, I'd like to make a little toast. It's been a long weekend, a trying weekend. Everything's been above freezing. Everything's melting, and I know what's going to happen. It's going to it's going to go the other way, and everything's going to freeze up, and, and it's just a giant popsicle out there. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I'm walking like Tim Conway, as the old man, because I don't want to fall down and get hurt. Because I heard you. Yeah, I heard you, Jack. I am an old man. Thank you. Thank you for... You know, Jack, don't you have something else to do? The show started. Usually you're on a date on Sunday night. Really? <laughs> Jack says he's got one in a half an hour and to speed it up. Okay, guys, here we go. To the sunny slopes of long ago. Ah, that doesn't heat you up and cool you down all at the same time. Let's let's start by looking at Jack's match champion. <laughs> yeah, I've got his match champion still. He's starting to get perturbed about that. Here's Jack's match champion. And I'll show you the first thing I look for when I go in to buy a Ruger revolver. Is I hold the gun like yay. And I look at the sight picture. It's a lot like, if, if you own an AK-47, it's a similar thing. <laughs> You're trying to make sure the barrel's straight and, and the sights are going to work right. Because unlike an, an AK, it's not as easy to, to put the front sight way, way, way over to one side. I mean, you can do it, but you're going to have the, the bottom of the sights going to be hanging right over the edge of the barrel. <laughs> so, yeah. And I, I do this because numerous times I have seen Ruger barrels that have been underturned or overturned. And as a result, on a revolver, if you underturn or overturn the barrel, the sight is not going to be straight, is it? No, it's going to be canted. And, and to me, that's the first thing I look for. And if the sights don't line up, if the front sight isn't got equal distances on either side of it in the rear sight something's something's wrong and it, you take a good look at it and you'll find that yeah that barrel isn't quite squared up and when that happens uh, I walk I don't buy that gun cuz cuz it's just nothing but a pain in the butt to send the gun back and have them try and correct what they didn't do right the first time you know what I'm saying I've kind of looked at guns over my whole life. When I have one that there's something wrong with, you send it back and get it fixed. But I try to get them that are perfect to start with as close as possible. And I've had a lot of guns in my life that have been fantastic guns. And I'll, I'll talk about real quickly here my 
that I used to carry for years when I worked for a gentleman and this gun was a specific uh, type of gun that was desired for the job I was doing. A Smith & Wesson 657 41 Magnum and what a fantastic gun that was and I had three I guess I went through until I got that one that was just absolutely perfect. And if you remember the old Jimmy Stewart movie, Winchester 73, it was the one of 1,000 gun that they were chasing after. And, and I love the line that Wyatt Earp, and I can't think of the gentleman's name, a great old character actor, he played Grandpa on the Waltons. He played Wyatt Earp in that movie, and he talked about every now and then, one in 1,000 times at Winchester's factory, they get a gun that's absolutely perfect and correct, and it wouldn't be right to just sell it to anybody. Well, no, every gun should be right and correct. I always hated that part of the movie, because no, every gun they make should be that good. It shouldn't be one in 1,000, and that one's special. They don't let you buy it, because it's special. You just get the one that's no good. You see what I'm saying? That always bothered me in that movie. But now Mr. Holster once again is getting off a stray. <laughs> the next thing I look for is I look at the hammer there and see if that baby is squared up. Look for equal distances on either side. Of course, now the match champion should be very nice and because they shim these hammers. These are these are shimmed out where the normal ones aren't. And you look at that and make sure that's all lined up correct and looks good and it does. Next you want to make sure and you'll you'll think I'm being being silly here, but you want to see if you can make sure that the chambers on the cylinder actually when you cock the gun are actually correctly lined up to the barrel because believe it or not yes I have seen ones that have not been and you also want to check that barrel gap you can you can carry yourself a gauge if you want might not be a bad idea if you're really really concerned with that but pretty much I just have to take a peek and you know, this one could be a little tighter, but I don't like them too tight either because then they bind up right away. If I, I Sometimes I like to shoot a lot and not have to come back and clean the gun. So I want a little space there. But this one, yeah, this one, well, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad, I guess. You probably can't really see very well from your vantage point. But, yeah, that's all right. And believe it or not, I want to make sure everything lines up. You look at the ejector rod. Make sure the ejector rod is run that run that ejector rod back and forth. Make sure that thing isn't bent. Because believe it or not, I've seen that too. Make sure that isn't bent. Make sure it's in, everything's machined correctly so that injector rod is straight and lined up evenly. Which on this gun is fairly simple to do. because you've got this ejector rod housing so you can look at the ejector rod there and see it. And I, I'm not being really picky that everything has to be absolutely perfect, but it would be nice if it were. But there might be things that are not quite off and not bad, but enough of them add up that, no, that's kind of a dog gun. I'm moving on. Then, of course, You've got the trigger pull, and here you're going to have to see if they'll allow you to dry fire the gun. Of course, every Ruger can be dry fired. Even their 22 revolvers can be dry fired without doing any damage to the firing pin. Because most 22s, no, you can't do that. But Ruger designs their engineers their firing pins so that they can be dry fired in a 22 without doing any damage. So here, you pull that trigger. Oh, that's nice. You see? Check those things out. But but mainly you're looking to see just cosmetically, are there machining marks that you don't like, that are unacceptable? 
Is everything centered and lined up correctly? Are there wear marks on the trigger? And on you know when you pull the hammer back, are there really obvious wear marks that show that the hammer is not uh, square and aligned correctly? Open and close it. Make sure everything operates right. Not that complicated, but the biggest one I've seen the most anytime I've looked at Ruger's is back to that barrel. And there's nothing more frustrating than getting a brand new revolver, beautiful revolver, and then when you shoot it, it's not going where it's supposed to. No, because the sights are off. And if you look at Vaqueros, this is the biggest defender on the Vaqueros. It's very easy to see on the Vaqueros whether they have that, that barrel right or not. And, of course, the Vaqueros are the fixed sight, single-action army guns, clones, the single-action army. The fixed sights where the rear sight is a groove in the frame and the front sight's the blade sight, blade sight that's set into the barrel, soldered into the barrel. And you can tell whether they did a good job on those or not by just looking at that front sight. Because what they do to compensate when they don't do a good job is they bend that sight. <laughs> and I'm serious. So right away it's easy to tell whether you like those Vaqueros or not by whether that front sight's bent. Because if that front sight's bent, you know right away they didn't do a good job on, on seating that barrel. I've been very happy with this Ruger Match Champion. And, and it'll just it'll just give me upset to no end when Jack actually pays off that 2750 and gets his gun back. <laughs> Till next time, go out and stay safe.